Hi. So um, I don't know if everybody's relationships, romantic relationships, have the same trajectory that all of mine seem to have. Um, I meet somebody new, and it starts out, and you know, it's all great, and you're finding out new things about each other, and you're like texting your girlfriends, like, "OMG, <laughs> he has hair on his back, and it makes him be like this big fuzzy teddy bear. It's so cute." <laughs> And then, you know, you see each other for a while, and maybe you're dating for a year, and then the next thing you know, you're like meeting that girlfriend for dinner, and you're like, girlfriend, if he doesn't start waxing that shit, I'm putting Nair in the shower gel. <laughs> so um, this is kind of how most of my relationships go. And um, once you get to that Nair in the shower gel part of the relationship, um, you start to tell your partner things that in the corporate world would be called developmental opportunities. So you share these with your partner and sometimes you share them in a very um, sort of uncensored manner. And I've had a number of these shared with me over the years and I'd like to talk about that tonight. But before I tell you about all of my developmental opportunities, I just want to say to the person I'm currently dating who's probably going to stalk me on YouTube tomorrow, Baby, I am the best thing since Taco Bell came out with the Dorito taco shell. So just fast forward two minutes for me. Do that? Okay, thanks. You, love you, babe. So one of the things that's been brought to my attention is um, when I eat a very large meal, I have this tendency afterwards, I clear my throat, it gets really phlegmy, I have like a little smoker's cough, and apparently, you know, allegedly that's annoying. <laughs> Um, I steal the covers in bed um, at night. I'm a cover hog, so I believe in Darwin's theory of evolution, and if you're not strong enough to keep the covers and keep yourself warm, that's your fault. <laughs> and then um, I have a small, small, um, little OCD problem. I, I like lists. I like to make lists. I like to keep lists of things that I want to buy. I like to make lists of things I want to read. I want to make lists or projects I want to do around the house. I make lists of lists. I love lists. Now, not only do I like lists, but when I get a little stressed or anxious, like when I'm telling a story, um, I like to recite the list to myself. And so, so that you can all make fun of me tonight, I'm gonna do that for you right now. So a typical list might go something like this. Okay, number one, when I get home, I'm gonna walk the dog, and then number two, I'm gonna take out the trash, and then number three, I'm going to dust the living room, and then number four, I'm gonna make dinner, and then number five. Or the other way the list can go is something like this. Okay, at three o'clock, I'm gonna get home, and I'm gonna walk the dog, and then at 3.30, I'm going to dust, and then at 3.45, I'm going to take out the trash, and then at four o'clock. And this is the way that I soothe myself and keep my anxieties low. But what happens is, that's the sort of theory or the, the voice going on inside my head, but what people hear in a social interaction, if I'm doing this around you, is something like, okay, number one, I'm gonna do this, and then number two, I'm gonna do something else, and then number three. So allegedly, that's annoying. And it was really sort of brought to my attention this one particular day uh, in October, several years ago, 2010 to be exact, I was uh, in a car traveling with my boyfriend at the time. Um, we were coming back from a vacation a long weekend in Maine, and he and I had been together a really long time. In total, we were together about uh, 15 years. We lived together for about 10 of them. And so we were m most definitely in that nair in the shower gel part of the relationship, right? So we're driving together in the car, and I'm the passenger, so my arm is up on the side of the car window, and I'm kind of leaning against it, when all of a sudden my arm brushes against something hard in my breast. And so I'm kind of like, okay, that's a little weird, right? And so I take my left hand, and I start to sort of feel around, and I say, uh, I, I think I feel a lump, honey. I think I, I, think I feel something. And he says, o okay, well, you have a doctor's appointment tomorrow anyways, it's, it's gonna be okay, right? Well, because I like to make lists and because I'm getting anxious and I'm getting stressed out, I proceed to sort of feel the lump and start to make a, lip, a list. So, okay, it's round. Okay, it feels firm. Okay, it doesn't feel like it's attached to the muscle. Okay, tomorrow, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna walk the dog, and then I'm gonna call the doctor. How early do you think I can call the doctor? And so I'm doing this, but again, what he's hearing is, 
okay. And I'm, you know, feeling my breast the whole time. And I'm doing this for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to die, and I'm going on and on and on. And finally he looks at me and he says, could you stop doing that? You're really annoying me. And so I stopped, and I turned my head away, and I cried. And he didn't hear that because I didn't want to annoy him with my tears. And in that moment, I also stopped loving him because I realized that he could never love me. <laughs>